In this module, you will learn about pressure in fluids. Like in solids, thrust and pressure are equally applicable to the other states of matter, liquids and gases. As liquids and gases have the property of flowing, they are collectively referred to as fluids. Any material that has the property of flowing is a fluid. Like solids, fluids also have weight and this weight exerts a force on the walls and the base of a container. We can demonstrate the effect of pressure in liquids through a simple example using a plastic bottle. Fill the plastic bottle completely with water. Then, make a small hole in the lower half of the wall of the bottle. You will see that the water gushes out through the hole with considerable velocity. This velocity is due to the pressure of the fluid at that point. Now let's learn about the other forces found in fluids. Initially, let's see what the term buoyancy means. When a body is immersed completely or partially in a fluid, it experiences an upward force. The upward force exerted by a fluid on any object when the object is immersed in that fluid is called up thrust. The buoyant force or simply buoyancy. The concept of buoyancy explains why certain objects float on water while others sink. All objects experience buoyant force when immersed in water. Floating and sinking of objects in water depends on how the density of the object compares with the density of water. An experiment will help us illustrate this concept. First, we take a beaker filled with water. Find two identical coins, one of iron and the other of plastic. Place both the coins on the surface of the water. The density of water is 1000 kg per cubic meter. The density of iron is 7000 kg per cubic meter. The density of plastic is 800 kg per cubic meter. The plastic coin floats and the metal coin sinks. So, how can we determine whether the buoyant force on an object will exceed its weight? The magnitude of this buoyant force depends on the density of the fluid. Therefore, the floating and sinking of objects in water depends on how the density of the object compares with the density of water. The plastic coin floats in water because the density of the plastic coin is less than the density of water. Therefore, the upthrust of water on the plastic coin is greater than the net weight of the coin. On the other hand, the iron coin sinks because the density of the iron is higher than the density of water. Therefore, the upthrust of water on the metal coin is not able to overcome the net weight of the coin. Thus, according to the principle of buoyancy, 
objects with density less than that of a given liquid float when placed in that liquid. Objects with density greater than a given liquid sink when placed in that liquid. As we saw, the density of iron is greater than that of water. But our ships are built of iron and steel parts and they don't seem to have any problems staying afloat in water. To better understand why a ship floats, let's look at a very simple everyday example of buoyancy. Take an empty plastic bottle and close its cap airtight. Put the bottle in a bucket filled with water. Then, try to immerse the bottle in water. You'll observe that attempts to push the bottle down in the bucket are unsuccessful and the bottle floats on water even though the density of glass is higher than that of water. Here's the reason why. The bottle contains air inside it. The volume of the bottle includes the volume of air in it. The density of air is much less than that of water. This means that the overall density of the bottle becomes lower than that of water. Hence, the upthrust on the bottle is greater than the weight of the bottle. Due to this, the empty airtight bottle is pushed upward when we try to immerse it completely in water. Therefore, the glass bottle floats on water. In order to make the bottle immerse completely in water, the volume of water equivalent to that of the bottle must be displaced. To keep the bottle completely immersed, the upward force on the bottle due to water must be balanced. This can be achieved by an externally applied force acting downwards. This force must at least be equal to the difference between the upward force and the weight of the bottle. The reason for flotation of the ship is similar to that of the flotation of the glass bottle. Even though the density of iron is more than that of water, the ship does not sink. The total volume of the ship includes the volume of the air in the ship and the volume of the metal used in making of the ship. This reduces the overall density of the ship to a value much less than the density of water. Hence, the ship does not sink.